Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. All right, here's the latest on this Vince McMahon, Janelle Grant, WWE, John Laurinaitis. She recently filed a petition in Connecticut court to obtain medical records related to her treatment at Peak Wellness by Dr. Carlin Kolker, which she alleges were arranged by McMahon. Attorneys for Kolker and Peak Wellness have since filed an official complaint in response to her petition, alleging it is part of a smear campaign related to her lawsuit against McMahon, WWE, and Laurinaitis. The complaint asks that Grant, quote, provide information concerning her activities in intentionally fostering patent lies and material misstatements related to her treatment at the clinic, and that this information could potentially be used in legal action against her. Plaintiffs believe that this information shall provide ample basis for claims by plaintiffs against Grant for, among other things, defamation, uh, interference with business relations, negligent and intentional infliction of emotional distress to Dr. Kolker. The complaint continues to deny any wrongdoing concerning her treatment. It says Grant's claim that Dr. Kolker or any of the staff at Peak Wellness ever intentionally withheld any information from her regarding her care is recklessly and harmfully false. Grant's suggestion that Dr. Kolker or any of the staff at Peak Wellness ever surreptitiously avoided and or refused to explain any of the substances, dosages, or purpose of the vitamins Grant has provided is recklessly and harmfully false. Grant's claim that Dr. Kolker gave her, quote, pushback simply because she inquired as to the specifics of what vitamins she was provided is recklessly and harmfully false. And Grant's suggestion that Dr. Kolker or any of the staff at Peak Wellness ever surreptitiously avoided and or refused to explain any of the substances, dosages, or purposes of the IV fluids Ms. Grant was provided is recklessly and harmfully false. And where is the claim here? There's a lot of words here. But uh, in some, Grant's claim that Dr. Kolker and the staff at Peak Wellness might have ever in any way been involved as civil conspirators in her pending claims against McMahon and the WWE to further imply Dr. Kolker and the staff at Peak Wellness would or could have ever engaged in falsifying business records, racketeer influence, etc. They're basically claiming that she has cost Dr. Kolker and Peak Wellness millions of dollars. I'm trying to find the exact amount because Dave said it yesterday. I almost fell out of my chair. Where is it here? I don't even know if it's in... to see how they got to that amount. Well, they're they're claiming that uh, all of the press, which, as he noted, the vast majority of the press has been on wrestling websites. But he claims that all of this press has cost him and the company millions of dollars. Because the name of the company nor the doctor were not identified in this. This is stuff that people have pieced together. So No, I think, I should, I think she mentioned Carlin Kolker. I'm Over. I'm pretty sure I remember that name and Peak Wellness. Those those were both named. So, anyway, that's the think, uh, latest I don't know. on I that. They may have been named later, but I did see that uh, in response uh, to uh, post wrestling and Callis Grant's attorney said that the court sided with Janelle and against McMahon in confirming she was within her right to seek her own medical records and data. From Dr. Carl and Coker of Peak Wellness, it is perplexing, but on brand to file an attack against a woman formerly in his care. So probably going to be a lot more of this. As well, it, actually, as here's the well thing. Too. This is what we're going to hear a lot more about because the the McMahon side, they didn't even want her to be able to get these records because they said the case is uh, on stay or whatever their the term is. And the court ruled, well, no, this is a separate thing. So, therefore, she can request these records. Well, now they've come back, and they filed a complaint against her, which is now a separate thing from the McMahon case. So there's a very good chance that we're going to be hearing about this regularly because this no. apparently is not part of the other uh, lawsuit. So we may be hearing about this every week from here on out. 
that's probably what the McMahon side would want you to do as well, too, because that's, you know, whether it's indirect or direct, <laughs> it's a head of his attack. Somebody that has spoken about being or at least has been spoken in terms of being incredibly loyal to Vince McMahon. And we don't know how deep that relationship goes. I'm sure there are people that are working on that story in the mainstream that are, are are checking on that. So it is going to be something that I'm sure the McMahon side would want to bring up because, again, he's already saying now this is a smear campaign against the doctor and firing back this hard. Anything that the McMahon side can do to damage Grant in any possible way is going to be in their eyes beneficial to them, whether it is in the judicial sense or not, we'll find out. Brian Danielson is even more impressed with Will Ospreay than he was before. They met in their first time ever dream match at Dynasty, and he was on Talk Sport, and he said, you see how good Will Ospreay is, right? You see it when you watch him, and then you wrestle him, and he's more incredible than you think. When I was wrestling him, I was like, oh my gosh, how is it possible? I didn't know he was going to be that good at interviews. He's really good at every aspect of wrestling. And you know, this Will Ospreay... As a fan, you you watch him, and it's like, holy smokes, this guy's like something else. And I have actually talked to many people who have wrestled Will Ospreay, and they have all said exactly what Brian Danielson has said, which is, man, whatever you think, this guy, he's like, he's the real deal. Absolutely incredible. So, you know, people say that about Randy Orton as well, but... You know, people don't like to hear that one. But everybody that wrestles Randy Orton pretty much says the exact same thing. Like, he's the absolute greatest. He's the best. I mean, raving about that guy. And they do the same thing with Will Ospreay, even though they work absolutely, completely different styles. So there you go. It's always funny who the workers like, especially the workers who have been in the ring with the person that they're talking about. And Randy Orton and Will Ospreay, yeah, in two completely diverse ways, uh, yeah, the, the same response. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simber, VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. If you want to text us, 425-780-7566. We'll look at some of these questions here in a minute. First off, Zack Sabre Jr. now leading the uh, A block in the G1. Yesterday's results, Shingo beat Evil. Zack Sabre Jr. beat Gabe Kidd. Jake Lee beat Shota Umino. Great Khan beat Sonata, and Naito beat Callum Newman. So now we've got Zack leading with 12 points. Evil has 10. Naito has 10. Sonata, Takagi, Great Khan, Jake Lee all have 8. Gabe Kidd and Shota Umino have six, and poor Callum Newman. This poor bloke, he's got four. And then for the B block, Jeff Cobb leading with ten. David Finley's got eight, along with Takeshita, Ren Narita, Goto, Yoda Suji. And then with six points, we got Hanare and Yuya Uemura. Bolton Oleg, Oleg Bolton, has got four points, and El Fantasmo has four. Yes, I did watch one match, Takeshita and El Fantasmo. It was awesome. It was like a, like a 12 on the granny scale. How'd you wind up on that one? Why that particular match? Because everyone said it was fantastic, so I watched it. Okay. All right. And it was. Mm. Did you hear the Observer Asian. show last night? Yes. They're trying to argue about who's a babyface and a heel now in New Japan. He's trying to tell me that El Fantasmo isn't a babyface as he's doing a total babyface match and babyface comebacks and the announcers are talking about it's his fans and his building. I'm like, what? He's a total babyface. I've seen El Fantasmo as a heel. He's not a heel right now. Then he tells me there's no babyface and heels in the tournament. And then later he starts going over the standings. He's like, yeah, well, you know, evil's a heel. Yeah, he's definitely a heel. Zach, Zach Saber Jr. is a heel. Yeah. He starts going over all these heels. Well. El Fantasmo is a baby face. He was a total baby face in this match, and he was incredible. I can't decide if he's a better baby face or a heel, to be honest with you. Because, man, I'll never forget that uh, 
what show was it? As I never forget it, I can't remember. But there was like a New Japan show in uh, at the uh, where Defy runs, and uh, and Seattle. I Phantasmo. You know, I just I'm always watching these babyface fan or these heel Phantasmo matches, and then uh, he came out and uh, God, who was he going to wrestle? It's like a New Japan. It was like a New Japan uh, strong taping or something like that. But he's going to face this other guy who's a heel. And he comes out, and I can't say what he said because it involves profanity. But he's talking about how you know Tacoma is a, is a hole, but it's my hole, and the place goes nuts for this guy. So he was going to play babyface because the other guy was a heel. Did and he say it like Naya? He did the best job as a babyface. I mean, it was the most heated match of the night. They were just going nuts for this guy. And, and you know, I don't know, man. He's amazing. This El Phantasmo. Not bad and at all. I hate all. To, to make him an old, but he ain't getting any younger. He is old. You he's 37. I, mean? I Look, I know. And he's worked the style where, you know, hey, you, you never know. But I'd like to, I would have liked to have seen him. I don't know if he figures into the cards now, but I would have liked to have seen him have a bigger role. You know, it's one of the problems with New Japan, problem with a lot of places, their tag team division and not being very creative with it over time. And yeah, he had his little team with Hikaleo for a while and he was tied into G.O.D. and all that sort of stuff. But he's one of those guys, I look at him, I look at Jeff Cobb and go, have you really done what you could be doing with some of these guys on your roster? And But that's the decision that they've chose. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.